Hello guys, I'm Yadig Reddy and welcome to the series of Java for Absolute Beginners. In this video, we will discuss about switch statement in Java. So basically, we have three types of decision making statements in Java, right? Those are if, if else and switch. So we have already discussed about if and if else statements in earlier video. So in this video, we will mainly focus on the switch statement, okay? So in if and if else statements, what we actually do? We verify the condition and based on the condition output, we execute the code, right? So every condition has two types of output that is either true or false, right? So two possibilities. So based on the condition output, that means if the condition is evaluated true, then we execute the code that is present inside the if block. And if the condition is evaluated to false, then we execute the code that is present inside the else block, right? So basically in switch statement, we don't have any conditions at all. That is the first thing, okay? So in switch, we basically pass some key and for that key, we will have some value, right? So based on that value, the code will be executed, okay? So first let me write the syntax, then I can tell you clearly, okay? So this is the syntax for switch statement. So here, first we need to write the switch keyword, then open the braces and write the key, then close the braces and open the curly braces and close the curly braces. So within this curly braces, we will have the cases, okay? So this case is nothing but a combination. Okay, so here I have mentioned key, right? So if you pass any key, so for that key, you will have some value, right? So if this key equal to value, then this case will be executed, okay? And in the similar way, you can have multiple cases here, okay? So let me add one more case. Like this, we can have multiple cases, okay? So for every case value, this key and value will be compared. And if the key is actually equal to this value, then this particular case will be executed. Okay. In if and if else statements, we are executing the I mean code which is present inside some block, right? Either it is a if block or else block. So we are executing the code that is present inside the block based on the condition output, right? So here we don't have the blocks exactly. Okay. So this case, you can call it as a block. So if the key and value are same, then this case will be executed. This case block will be executed. So for every case, you have to write the break statement. Okay. So what this will do, it will actually after executing whatever you have written here. So here we basically have the code. Okay. So after executing this code, it will break this switch case. Okay. So it will not go further. It will break it here and it will come out of the switch case. Okay. So that is how this break actually helps. So for example, if any of this is not working, I mean, if the key value is not found in any of these cases, then by default, it will go to default case. Okay. So here also you can write the code. Okay. So here in the switch statement, default is not mandatory, but it is always advisable to add the default because if the key value that is what you are passing is not found in the case, then we have to print something to the user, right? So that is how this default will be helping us. Okay. So basically this is the switch case syntax guys. So here you may have a doubt like what kind of key I can pass. I mean, what kind of data type I can pass as a key. So you can pass either byte or short or integer or string or enum. So these are the predefined data types that you can pass to a switch statement. Okay. So let's look at one example. So basically we have seven days per week, right? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, like that, right? So what I will do, I will pass the day number. Okay. Let's start with the Monday. And if I pass one, it will be Monday. If I pass two, then it will be Tuesday. Okay. So I want to print like that. So let me just write the program. So I'll create one variable here. I will say day number. So let me just take it as two. So this day number will be my key. Okay. So this two will be my value here. So first I need to have from one, right? So one, I'll print Monday. Okay. A simple example, guys. I'm not writing any big code or something. Okay. So if the day number is one, I'll print Monday. So I'm starting the day with Monday. Okay. And in the default, I will just print a error message. Okay. So I will say sys error day number is invalid. A simple message. Okay. So here, so based on this day number, we are executing the code. Okay. So let me just execute this. So here you can see in the console, it is printing as Tuesday, right? 
so based on the day number it is going to this case okay so it is executing this piece of code this sysout then it is breaking this for this switch statement and it is coming out of this one so for example if i change this one to 5 now it is saying fifth day is friday okay so for suppose if i mention the day as 9 basically we don't have the day as 9 so i am giving the wrong input okay so in this case what happens so it will go to this default case okay so here it is printing day number is invalid right so it is printing in the red color because i have used system.error.println so this is how we basically use the switch statement okay so one thing you need to remember is in switch statement you don't have limited number of possibilities it is unlimited okay so here i have taken the days right so basically for a week you have seven days only so if you take for a month you will have 30 combinations for a week you have seven combinations here okay so just like there for a year you will have 365 combinations so based on your input the combinations are actually decided right it's not like if for if else statements so in if for if else statements you pass any kind of value either it is integer values comparison or objects comparison or anything so the values will be only two the outcome values will be two true or false only right but here it is not like that okay it is unlimited number of values so that is one main thing you need to remember so here let me show you one more thing so if you don't put this break what happens is so i'll change the day number as one okay after executing this code so it will come to case one right so if i pass one it will come to case one then after executing this one it will go to next case okay it will not break this which case so it will go to next case until it finds the break statement so let's see now you see it is printing as monday and tuesday so here in this case two, after this Tuesday printing, we have the break, right? So that is why it is coming out of this switch statement from here. Otherwise it will keep on going like this. Okay. Until it finds the break. So like this here, I have passed the integer, right? So this is the integer value. So just like that, you can pass the string and enum, byte, short, you can pass any of those values. Okay. So let me tell you one more thing here in switch statement default is not mandatory, right? So if I remove this, still my switch statement will not throw any error. Okay. I can still execute the program. See, I can still execute the program. But the only problem is if you pass any value, which is not actually available in any of these cases. So here nine is not available, right? But I'm passing nine. So in this case, what happens if you execute, it will not print anything in the console. Okay. So it is directly coming out of the switched condition. So as a user, we don't understand, right? What exactly it is trying to do. So that is why it is always advisable to use the default statement so that we will understand whether the value that we passed is invalid or valid, right? So that is how we work with switch statement in Java. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any doubts or if you are facing any issues, please let me know in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.